Praise the Lord. Amen. Good to be in God's house this evening. We're going to start off by reading from the 48th Psalm. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about something. I was like, man, maybe I need to work on how I start off services, but I just gave, I start concentrating on the word of God. I have a feeling of you're approaching God. You guys might have the, 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 the feeling that you're approaching God, but I was just like, this is serious to me. Amen. Amen. This is serious to me. Yes, sir. That's right. This is serious to me. So it's like, I'm not trying to impress you. This is, there's, there's another person in here. Amen. 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 Jesus. Amen. Amen. I, I have to be like, just keep it straight. <laughs> We're all going to be all right. Amen. Amen. And I'll begin reading at verse 8. Verse 8 of Psalm 48. As we have heard, let us not fear this. I'm sorry. Thank you, Father. God, God is worthy of all the praise. Amen. He's good to, to us. I believe the Spirit is here. I think He can show you new letter. Lift up your voice, your hands if you're able to. And just know that He hears you. He's ready to forgive. And He is worthy of all the praise. So we lift up our hearts this evening. You should know that His ear is inclined up to us. He hears us. His strength is for us to live for Him. His righteousness is given to His people. And it is because of Him that we are saved. And He is worthy of all praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your goodness and your mercy. We pray that you move, touch Pastor, as he brings forth that word that you laid on his heart, Lord God. Let it be laid on ours, Lord God, that we mold it over, Lord God, that we contemplate for them. Are doing it to live as unto you to show that we love you. For your Lord, our God, we praise crazy. In Jesus' wonderful name, Jesus name. Amen. 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 Come on, brother. Amen. We sing as unto the Lord. We invite you to come and join us as we sing unto the Lord. Amen. Church, page 173. There is power in the blood. Page 173.
it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. And uh, thinking about what Reverend Serrano was saying, I was feeling that way on the way up to church. I said, ooh, being a preacher, being a pulpit, well, that's some hot stuff. It's funny who's feeling that way because right up here going, woo, Lord Jesus, truly being a pastor is the highest calling God can place on me. <laughs> and all you wonder as a minister, What's going to be on the other side of this thing for me? That self-preservation didn't come in, but it's going to be all right because we know Jesus is in reality. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. So God is good, and, uh, and we're here to worship the Lord. And, and there is no set rules on worshiping God. I don't see any set rules on it. But we come this way with the attitude of reverence and honor to the king. Right? Yeah. We come in reverence and honor to the King. Amen. And so that's what it's all about. Be mindful of the Tuesday night Bible study. Bible study is Tuesday night at uh, 730. And so um, be prepared for that. And we're over in the book of Proverbs. Okay? And so and, and that being said, we also are planning on starting some groups. Uh, 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 probably a group deal going on probably on Wednesday. I say probably not a, a lot because we want to nail it down where we get some clarity on where we can have uh, these group meetings at. It may be at a Barnes and Nobles or something like that. A place where we can just sit down and gather together. Or maybe it's uh, at an apartment complex or somewhere where we can just sit down and gather together and talk about the Word of God and get people saved get people in, and get them baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And so there are places somewhere out there. There's some place where we can go and uh, and people won't mind us having those things, okay? So, uh, like like the Reverend said, you get a Starbucks or something, you don't have to be a hundred thousand people, but we can have some little group meetings and, and maybe uh, Sister Constance and I, we can talk about it. All of us, we can talk about it and probably just bounce it off of each other this evening and see what the Lord does. But I want to get this started on Wednesday. Also, we are doing our Bible reading deal. And um, I know that I was out of town, but I'm back. And so we're going to go from now, we can start tonight. Some of you may have already started, not sure. But officially, let's start it tonight. So uh, you should know, I think, that we have uh, who's going to be checking on who for reading. And so let's see where we land at at the end of this, okay? And the end of this would be November the 3rd, okay? November the 3rd for the Bible reading and November the 3rd for the building of the work of God, okay? We want to build it up and we can do this as we meet together and we begin to teach uh, people about Jesus. And we may even incorporate some of you teaching some Bible topics uh, to your group or whatever. So. Let's see what God does, and we'll sit down and we'll bring it out and, and follow the Spirit of God and, uh, and, and build something for the Lord so that we can move forward in God, okay? And, and it can be done. So I share with you what I see after the church worship service. At this moment, we're going to go ahead and take up the Sunday evening tithe and offerings. And remember, all Christians faithfully and consistently pay their tithe and gladly give in the offering as unto the Lord. And we do have tithing envelopes up here if you need one. And so let us pray over the gift and the giver. Brother Glover, if you don't mind. Well, I'll go ahead, go ahead and pray over the gift and the giver, please, sir. Lord, we thank you for these tithes and offerings that we're about to give to you tonight, Lord. We ask your blessings upon them, Lord God. Let them be for the building of your kingdom, Lord. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone need time to get those questions?
appreciate your giving and online you can give if you go over to the comment section of the Facebook page right there that comment section where uh, people are commenting um, you can click on one of those links the link there and you can give and we appreciate it and so that we can go on and move into a better place all right we want to move forward in the Lord so let's continue to give in obedience unto the Lord as unto the Lord and at this time sister Davis is going to sing a special to us as unto the Amen. Lord
looking forward to what God is going to do.
emboldened by the Spirit. Okay, we're going to make it off so it makes sense. Emboldened by the Spirit. Let us pray. I would like to ask uh, Sister Nat, Nat, I believe, Adam. Y'all got the same names. Yeah. You know, I'm asking God's blessing on this service. I said, hearts and minds are clear. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just come to you tonight, God, glorifying your name, Father. God, we just continue to uplift you in this service tonight, God, as you begin to speak to your leader, God, and give him the words to say to the congregation, Father. God, we ask, God, that the way we came in, God, we would not leave the same, Father God. Yes. That your word would just be revelation unto us tonight, God, that we will let this word resonate in our hearts, Father. Let us not just be hearers, God, but doers of this holy word, Father God. And so, God, we just pray for the anointing to come down tonight like never before, God. Fill this mouth, God, as you give him the right words to say, God, that we may be able to understand it. And, God, we just bless your holy name on tonight, God. And we reverence you right now, God, like never before. And I praise your name tonight, Father God. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. 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 Emboldened by the Spirit. Emboldened by the Spirit. And I carefully introduced this message because of the fact that this is not a promotion of getting these youngs to get curious about drinking. I thought about it, I said, now God, if I go this route, because sometimes you can say things that causes people in the, in the main book, not even harm it, you can bring harm. And so, we'll show you the good and bad about drinking. <laughs> the good and bad about drinking. And it's not all about that, but the introduction to emboldened by the Spirit. Amen. One thing that drinking beer does, and wine, and all this, when you get your buzz on, you start buzzing a little bit. One thing it does is it gives you boldness. I was amazed at that the first time I started sipping on some stuff. I was amazed at how bold I was and wondered I could talk to anyone. Did not matter who they were. I didn't care about how I act, how I was acting. It didn't matter if I was foolish. It was hard for me to be embarrassed about what I was doing. Because I was uh, lit up, as they say, Sister Cotton. Yet they call it what? They call it liquid courage, right? It's liquid courage. And it feels good to not have any fear about you, right? It feels good to be in another state of mind where you are kind of free to do whatever you want without your emotions getting in the way. Liquid courage. But at the same time, that liquid courage will get you in trouble. Yeah. You begin to get that liquid courage going in you, you feeling good, you might get a knot upside your head because you talk to the wrong person the wrong way, right? Yes. Somebody might jump on you and thump you good. And when you wake up in the next morning, you're going, oh, why is my eye so black and blue? Oh, why is my lip all busted up? See, that type of liquid courage, that liquid courage make you stupid too. Yes. Right? But the Holy Spirit doesn't make you stupid tonight. Amen. The Holy Spirit, they call it new wine, mocking of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit gives you a boldness once he comes in. Amen. He gives you a boldness and along with it, a clear head, a clear mind to judge a situation and to understand where you at, following God, uh, allowing the Lord to be your Savior, and with boldness you speak the word. You lift up your voice and you tell the world about Jesus with absolutely no shame, because with the Spirit of God comes boldness, and that's the reason why Peter has stood it, uh, up with the eleven and he lifted up his voice. He was not running in denial of Jesus like he did uh, uh, prior to this. But when the Holy Spirit came in, like what? Like a mighty, a rushing wind. That wind that filled the room. 
that when the boldness and fire set upon each and, and every one of them, when the fire set on each of each and every one of them as uh, as a cloven tongues, all of a sudden they begin to speak. They begin to speak in another language. They begin to speak in tongues as God was speaking through them, and they were praising the name of the Lord. They were praying to God for the word. They began to bless the name of the Lord in the language that they didn't even know about, and it brought them boldness from the Holy Spirit. Right. And brothers and sisters, this boldness is not to be quenched. Uh, our Christian boldness should never be quenched. Our, Christ, our Christian boldness should always be at peak performance. Your Christian boldness should always be hot tonight. And that is the key today. The Lord wants us to be on fire at peak performance, at a peak walk, at a peak relationship with Him. And it should never go down. And that's the reason why today we can be baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, whether a church or whoever, whatever dogma out there, and whether they like it or not. The Lord wants us to have the Holy Spirit. Yes. Listen to this. God never wants you to be without encouragement. That's the funny thing, and we need to understand this. The Lord never wants you to be without freedom. The Lord never wants you to be bound and feeling like it's a struggle of serving Him. The Lord wants you to move in Him free. God wants you to be able to walk up and down the scriptures without hindrances. The Lord wants you to be able to live for Him without anything bogging you down. God wants you to have the baptism of the Holy Spirit so that you can be on fire. The Lord wants us to be on fire all the time. No matter what is going on. No matter who is saying what. No matter whether or not we lost our job. No matter whether or not somebody cares about us or wants to be a part of our life. God says stay on fire. Because it is bold. 
It's not hindered or, or it's not hindered by anything. I'm in your face. And that's the way it is when we get the Holy Ghost. I am Christian. Boldly a Christian. And there is no mistaking about it because we see the abundance of life. The fruit of the Spirit because it is fueled by the Holy Spirit that's always hot. It's fueled by the Holy Spirit that is always hot. Yes. I remember listening to this man. His name is Earl Nightingale. And I tell, I'm telling you, one of these days, somebody, some folk going to listen to me. One of these days, all I need is a plan and work. And that's all I need. But look, he began to talk about inspiration. He said, nothing is accomplished without inspiration. He said, make sure that your inspiration is to a peak. And that stuck out to me boldly. I like that word, bold. Because it's like it, it just hit me in the face. Yes. Peak inspiration. And that is what the Holy Ghost is about. Peak inspiration that causes us to, to always be able to accomplish that in which people go, how did you do that? That cannot happen. There is no way you can live like that. There is no way that you can walk like that. But with the Holy Spirit uh, uh, being utilized in our life, it causes us to be up to the peak, to the height of believing God. And inspiration is on fire for God if we can accomplish anything for the Lord. I like how they said that when they perceived the boldness in peace, when they saw the boldness in Peter, uh, they understood that this man had been with who, y'all? With Jesus. Yeah. That Jesus is bold tonight. He's just like that bold coffee. He's just like that hot bread. Yeah. And he lives uh, inside of us that yeah. we may be able to accomplish uh, whatever the Lord would have us to do. We can go through anything with the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And there is a way of getting the Holy Spirit if you don't have the Holy Spirit. Right. Number one, the Holy Spirit is for us today. Yes. Get that out of your head that he's not because I don't read in the Bible where there's a day where he quit, Jesus quit baptizing people in the Holy Spirit. Right. John said, there cometh one more powerful than me. He said, I am able to baptize you into war. John said, whoop, whoop, and that's all I can do as a man. But there is one who cometh who is mightier than me, whose uh, shoe latches I am not even worthy to lose. I ain't even worthy to play around with the Lord's feet. I ain't even worthy to get down there because he is higher than me. He said he shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Whose hand, whose uh, fan is in his hand and he shall thoroughly uh, purge the floor, right? The Lord would thoroughly purge the floor and he will uh, uh, burn up the chaff, but he would take the wheat, the wheat into his garden. What does that mean? We can take that as meaning this, that the Lord, by the Holy Spirit, once he baptizes us into the Holy Spirit, he's going to uh, burn up the things about us that are, that are useless. He will begin to perfect us. And why in the world would God want to stop that today? Jesus came, he died on the cross so that men can receive the Holy Spirit. He did not intend for us to be saved only and not have the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You need to be submerged in power else you won't get the boldness. You need uh, to be immersed, immersed in fire else uh, you won't have the courage to stand without embarrassment. You need uh, the Holy Ghost so that you will say, I want to be the one that fights in the kingdom of God. I want to stand for my Lord. I need power. I need freedom. Without my emotions getting in the way. Without my feelings getting in the way. So that I can say boldly to the devil, I rebuke you in the name of the Lord. So that I can say, you can't live in adultery and go to heaven. So that I can say, you cannot live in profanity.
us to be free to do that stuff. We need the Holy Ghost. God wants to baptize someone in the Holy Spirit. In this church where they say they do a lot of uh, funerals in this church. I said, we need to bring life in this church. Hey, listen, y'all, y'all need to understand the Bible and quit just going by uh, what Grandma said. But by saying what some Baptist church said somewhere. We need to read the Bible for ourselves. One man said, don't be a follower, be a student. I love it tonight. Don't be a follower, be a student. Learn the scripture for yourself so you will not be shaken about somebody's criticism who don't know what they're talking about. Because I don't even know 
what I need to pray for as I ought to know. Amen. How about that? So the Lord's going to keep us continuously praying, and we don't even know what in the world we need to pray for. He's going to guide us in ignorance. That's what the book of Romans chapter 8 talks about. He said, but the Spirit make an intercession for us with groanings that cannot be spoken because you can't understand what you're saying. Helping our infirmities. So therefore, if we don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, our infirmities are not helped. We need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I don't feel like it, but because of the Holy Spirit in me, all of a sudden I feel like it. Where did it come from? The Holy Ghost. He gets inside of your mind. He gets inside of the deepest part of you. And let me tell you something that people don't talk about. The mind always works. Imagine if your brain was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Yes. You know you got when you sleep, your brain don't stop working. All right. Imagine if you was baptized in the Holy Spirit and you drink and you drank. If your mind is always working and the Holy Spirit has baptized you, you are baptized rather by Jesus in the Holy Spirit. Guess what? The Holy Spirit is going to be working with you even in your sleep. Yes, amen. So that we can have boldness yes. in the morning. Yes. Because the gift is stirred up in us. Yes. Amen. Ain't it amazing? Yes. Yes. The Lord wants to get down to your heart of hearts. In the most deepest part of your spirit, in the center of your spirit, in your spirit, your mind keeps working. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives you boldness. You won't be afraid. You won't be afraid anymore. You won't be trying to be a Christian because now you can freely be yes. instead of trying. All right. Man, I don't like trying. Trying. I like trying to attempt to say that. But struggling all the time. Not to say that you won't have any struggle, but I'd rather go through the struggle with the baptism of the Holy Spirit than not have it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's like nitrous oxide. You know what I'm saying? You ever heard of nitrous oxide? I remember years ago. And I know this happened. Because a friend of mine that was there, which I was like, you were there? He said, I remember that Grand National racing that Camaro. I said, oh, you went with us? He said, yeah, I was there. I said, well, I know I'm getting old because I don't remember him being there. But he described it just like me. That was this black Buick, 86 Buick, or 89 Buick Grand National, 3.8 V6, supercharged turbo engine. Sister Cotton, I'm telling you, that was the fastest American built car at that time. This is the first time they figured out that V6s can run just as good as a V8. They put a 373 rear end on that thing, posi tracks. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Sister Cotton is the race car, it's got the way. It's a quiet car, kind of sound like my Ford F 150, it whistles. <laughs> When you hit the gas. And when it takes off, it sounds like that. It's, it goes shh and whistles, man. And these big old loud cars pop, 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 sound like they're about to cut off with the right. big huge cans. Man, that little V6 will wham them out. Because it was quick out of the hole, Sister Cotton. You couldn't keep up with it. With that 373 on a V6, caused that uh, caused the stroke on that thing to turn faster. See, a V8 takes long, but it'll walk you down, though. But out the gun, a V6, oh man, with a 373 rear end on the back, that thing is already turning. And it's hard to beat him out the whole hall. So anyway, so he's racing this Camaro. It was a 68, I believe it was. It was a gold Camaro. But the Camaro had nitrous oxide. Oh, yeah. And out the hole, the Grand National just whistled on. Whoosh, pulled him out the hole. And everybody was looking at 
and we just do that Grand National was going to win, but the guy squeezed him. He hit that button, and, and everybody's like, what? That dude went like this, it's the kind, it was like, eh, and he went like nothing. Because he had nitrous oxide. And we were like, what happened? And when they came back, we said, hey man, we know you, we know you got nitrous oxide. He, we said, raise the hood. He wouldn't raise the hood because you could see those little blue lines and stuff in it coming into the carburetor and stuff. You know what I'm talking about? He would not raise that hood. Because there is no way, you don't see a car walk down another car that easy, man. He sliced through that grand action. And you know it's the same way it is with the Spirit of God. That nitrous helped. <laughs> that, that Camaro was improved. Because it was not happen with, happening within its own power. But the Holy Spirit is just like that. When you begin to speak in tongues, you can be beat down to the ground. But you begin to pray in tongues in faith, and say, I'm not going to get up until it's clear. All of a sudden, it's like you hit that button and boom, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, you're full of the fruits of the Spirit and you get wisdom yes. and understanding yes. and you can see your way. And yes. all of a sudden, yes. all of a sudden, your circumstance looks so I can't, I, I can sing a song like this. 
I couldn't breathe right till the Holy Ghost came. All right. That's, that's seriously. Because after I got baptized with the Holy Spirit, I was amazed at how simple the Bible became. Amen. I can actually read. And it actually made sense. Instead of looking at intimidating, oh, I can't understand. I can't understand. Because I had no boldness. I had no freedom. But God gave me freedom. He, he, he cleansed my body. What, he cleansed my mind, right? Like that song says. For real, I know what that's talking about. And I can read it. And I've never, ever been able to read the Bible the same as I did prior to getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit. No joke. Right. Come and think about it. It, it, it don't look like a... <sighs> to me. What's that? What's that mean? I mean, how? And then you go, how did I not understand it? All right. How did I not understand it? Holy Spirit, boldness. Do we want it tonight? You can have the Holy Spirit. And if there's anyone in here tonight, I don't know where everybody is. You need a baptism of the Holy Spirit. You can get it right in this place that's been funeral written for many years. You can get the Holy Spirit in this place that's been funeral written for many years. All they do is eulogies up in here, and now the life of the Holy Ghost is walking in the midst. I hate death. Give me life. I hate caskets. None of them look pretty to me. Give me a mansion. I hate the thought of hell. I like thinking about heaven. I can't wait till I get on the other side because I'm looking forward to the day, Sister Natalie. Death is behind me. It's grievous. Only want a church with a graveyard near it. Amen. Don't want a church with a graveyard near it. I'm not going to put my name down on somewhere where I can do funerals so I can make a little bit of change. That's just me. That's right. I find change somewhere else. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Nothing home with I think my congregation members funeral is coming in. That's just not moi. There's no problems to be somebody else. I'm not finding fault. Can I be me, though? Myself? Yes. I mean, Brother Allen, he becomes a pastor. He can go all the funerals. He can sit there and touch the hand and say, oh, holy, 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 holy. I'd be like, woo, yes. God bless you, bro. I just see you in this. He loves and cares for us. 
and wants us to be baptized with the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. Be bold, brothers and sisters. I'm about to get out of here. Keep discouragement. Discouragement comes. I'm about to be your game chain. Discouragement does hit us. They come right to survival, but keep it small. Because you're going you're gonna to face it, right? You're going to get hit. You're going to get, it's natural to get. Watch this. It's, don't you know that it's natural to get discouraged? It's a natural thing. But what we have to do is control it. Don't let it be. Don't get Don't inflate it. Don't and imagine a little something that you squeeze it. Just squeeze it. No, that's about as big as you're going to get. And I may cry for a second, but sooner or later, I ain't going to cry too long. <laughs> I may be down for a second, but only a second. Because I got sense enough to know that that situation don't make the sun come up. Danger. Keep it small. Any negativity toward God in your relationship with God, keep it as small as possible. Knowing that, okay, this is natural. And nobody's going to tell you that. You're going to be super Christian, never get discouraged. Oh, please, you see, you fool yourself. But keep it small, small, until you can move on. But move on quickly. All right? Move on quickly. Let's get the baptism of the Holy Spirit if we don't have it. If you want me to pray for you, now our heads bowed and eyes closed and reverence to the Lord. All you got to do is call out to Jesus. Call him up, call him up, and tell him what you want. You don't have to sing that. Call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord.
good, isn't it? Keep them for the Lord. Search the scripture. And I advise, read your word. Find out. Find out. Know it for yourself. Think for yourself. <laughs> Think for yourself. We're going to go ahead and dismiss in prayer. I want to ask, um, let's see, um, um, Sister Cotton, if you don't mind dismissing us, please. Lord, I thank you for the word on the back. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this life that you blessed us with. Continue to watch over us and keep us all through this night, Lord. And if it be your will, Lord, bless us to see another day, Lord. I thank you. I don't know what you have Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Continually watch over us, Lord. Continually keep us. Continually father over us. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Shake hands and show yourself friendly. And be mindful online, everyone, about your reading, your word. And um, you can start anywhere. And I'll be checking on Sister Alice. <laughs> I guess she's my reading partner. And so the whole bottom line is this, is that we want to see the changes that take place in our lives, okay? Amen. And, um, and, and the things that, that will... One thing about it is this. I was thinking of comfort zones and discomfort. And you know you know that you're growing when you create new comfort zones, you know. And you got to get out of what you, your norm and you begin to grow and begin to expand in reading your Bible. And at first it's going to seem awkward or whatever, but at the end of these 30 days, I'm here to tell you, man, God is going to move like you've never seen. He will. He will move because you're going to attract the kingdom of God in such a way. And, uh, and so he, he's going to bless us in our emotions, in our hearts, in our, the way we see things. And, uh, and, and it's just amazing what the word that God said, his words are spirit and they are life. And so that thing is going to create a new world for us. And it's amazing what God can do. It is amazing without going into too much explanation. So, so let's we get start. It's early. Um, Y'all know who who your partners are, and uh, we can start tonight. And you don't have to necessarily call, but you can check on the Monday. You know, so y'all work it out. Work it out among each other. Um, how you want to do it? So I know that um, Sister Alice and I, I plan on having us having us read in the book of Psalms and we're going to mix it up with Matthew. We may, me and her may jump around, we may go from Matthew along with Psalms to Acts and into uh, first uh, Acts, Romans along with Psalms <laughs> and then we may go in Proverbs as we're going through the whole New Testament. Proverbs mix it all up. So, um, so y'all can do this, and, and let's see how we're doing. And also on a, on a piece of paper, write down, and this is a hard thing to do, how your life is going now. Write it down on a piece of paper, and you can do this tonight. Or you can do it in the morning, but preferably tonight. How's, how are things going right now? How, how's, how are things, what changes would you like to see in your life? Write it down on a piece of paper. And if you cannot come up with those things, right, try tomorrow, try it again. Matter of fact, you can try all week. You can make a whole list of what you need changed in your life. Because that first, that first sheet of paper is going to, going to be odd to you. Because you never really just sit down and go, write down your problems. This is going on, that is going on, this is going on, and that is going on. And then, when we get to the end of it, well, in the middle, in the middle of our Bible reading, let's do it like this, right? In the middle, when I say in the middle, maybe 15 days out, halfway there, write down what's going on then. And then at the end of the 30 days, write down what's going on, right? And you're going to see changes. I'm telling you, the Word of God works. Amen. Because 
Brothers and sisters, circumstances mean nothing to me. More than what's going on in here. Amen. That's my concern because this outside stuff, if I'm right within, and I'm not talking about right just living above sin or whatnot, but if I'm discerning right, I'm making the right decisions according to God's leading, then this out here is going to be okay. And I don't care. You can put it in your bank account. You can put that in there. I'm broke. See where you at at the end of the 30 days? No. For example, I'm hurting. See where you'll be at the end of the 30 days. And if you're new and you want to participate in this, you can. Just let me know or contact Sister Davis yes. and, and let us know what you want to do. So I tell y'all what me and Sister Al is gonna do. We're gonna, since we are teens. <laughs> that's funny. Brother Lance said that's unfair. <laughs> but uh, but right, that's, we're gonna approach, that's the way I wanna do it. I'm gonna read, we're gonna start in Matthew and read Matthew along with Psalms. And read stuff along with Psalms and along with Proverbs and along with Ecclesiastes. Just read, read, read all these 30 days. And see where we're at, all right? Yeah. And God is gonna work it all out. Yes. Isn't this okay? Yes. You know, it even feels good even just thinking about it. Because if this can get changed, this is right. Amen. And I'm not talking about just living above sin. I'm talking about not being kooky and weird up here. Because you can be off <laughs> up here and living above sin, but yes. you just don't know how to live. You don't know. But you, you're not living in fornication. You're not doing all this, this crazy stuff. But sometimes we just don't know how to map out our lives. Amen. And that's what this is all about. Because God said, and I know folk may not like it, but I would that you prosper. Yes. Amen. I would that your soul prosper. What did he say? I would that you prosper even as your soul prosper. As your soul prosper. I would that you prosper even as your soul prosper. So God wants you blessed. Amen. And I'm telling you, Amen. we read, we get it in here. This one lady said, I'm going to shut my mouth. How? How? Can you pay my phone bill? No. I'm not going to do that. But if you follow Jesus, not only will you pay your phone bill, <laughs> you'll receive. <laughs> Jesus said, if you forsake all, and I'm not talking about just material blessings. The Lord knows how to bless more than a stinking phone bill. That's a joke to God. That's almost like, are you serious? The Lord saves from sins, delivered from all this stuff. That's worse than a stinking phone bill. And not only that, God has more than a phone bill. Amen. It's a phone bill to God. But anyway, I'm shutting up. Remember, the Lord made the, the earth in seven days, y'all. Yeah. And he can fix anything in a few moments. It may not even take you a whole 30 days. Amen. He may do you just like Genesis. You may start off by day seven going, hey, you know what? This is good. All right. Amen. Let's get out of here, man. Let's dismiss it. We already dismissed in prayer. May God bless you real good. God bless you. If you want to be a part of this Bible reading thing, come on board, okay? God bless. <laughs>